Running out of food. Dealing with insurrections. Deciding whether your children should go work in the mines. No, I'm not describing Britain in the 1970s. These are just some of the hallmark decisions that make up Frostpunk, a game that took the bleakest imaginable setting and somehow made it worse. This game came along and packaged a whole load of concepts together to become a cornerstone of the genre. All city builder survival games that followed it would invariably be compared, and all those before felt lacking in comparison. Which is funny, because at its core, it's not really a city builder at all. It's a game about picking the lesser evil, questioning your own morality, doing anything you can to fulfill your seemingly impossible directive. The city must survive. It's not about creating the right infrastructure or nailing down a build order. It's about managing your people and knowing which sacrifices are worth making. It's anxiety inducing, nerve wracking, and will leave you lying awake at night thinking, oh God, where did I go wrong? Well, another one to add to that list anyway. Other games have tried to capture the same magic, but nothing's come close. By just doing a few things differently, Frostpunk set a genre on a new course and made the survival element of city builders foundational. Where did it come from? What did it do differently? And why did it have such a profound impact to the point that we're still talking about it half a decade on? I don't want to make the misconception that Frostpunk was the first of its kind and single-handedly pioneered the survival aspect of city builders. Because to be honest, the game that really made those waves came a few years earlier. City builders have been around since the late 80s, with a few series dominating the genre. Anno, The Settlers, Caesar, Stronghold, and of course SimCity, all built robust franchises around the core concept of let's build a city. But they all basically had the same goal, pick a setting, and thrive. The genre got a bit confused in 2013 when SimCity flopped so spectacularly with its weird hybrid online focus, but City Skylines came in to save the day and fill the gap in the market. There was also a big push for casual titles, many of them mobile or browser-based games, and the more in-depth titles started to become niche. But a year after SimCity's undignified exit, a game came out that ignored trends and offered something complex, stressful, and not at all tailored to the casual crowd. Banished. Here, you're not trying to develop your town into a veritable world power. You're just trying to keep your population alive. The concept of survival had entered the mix. It offered a new angle of societal change that wasn't so much an evolution as it was a step in another direction. There were other titles that had aspects of survival here and there, but Banished is, to me anyway, the one that wrapped up everything and set the genre on a new course. The city building aspects of prosperity and grandeur would keep going strong, but Banish presented something that appealed to a section of the audience that were a bit more masochistic. Over the following years, other games expanded this concept. Planet Base took the survival angle and sent it to space, tasking you with developing a self-sufficient colony on an alien planet. Then there was Surviving Mars, which did basically the same thing, but better. In these games, victory was far from guaranteed and balancing the various needs of your people added another layer of complexity. But they still all were, at their core, city builders. But then, Frostpunk came along, which decided to ignore everything else that was going on and do something else instead. I'd like to say Frostpunk came out of nowhere, but it didn't. Its creators had already made waves with their previous title, This War of Mine, a game that wasn't supposed to be fun. I mean, it was fun to play, but it was also thought-provoking, complex, and went against the grain. It's a game about war, but you aren't a soldier blasting through enemy territory with a litany of guns in tow. You're a civilian trying to survive in a war-torn city, with the concept being inspired by the Siege of Sarajevo. 11-bit games hit a home run with this, and it's honestly one of the most powerful games you'll ever play. Making Frostpunk wasn't so much them saying, let's make a city builder, as it was, let's evoke similar feelings to this, but on a grander scale. If you've played either, you'll know the feeling of being torn between a rock and a hard place, with no correct options in sight. This is where other city survival games suffered, because in those, there was a correct way to play, but not in Frostpunk. Where Banished and Surviving Mars and Planet Base started to pry open the door of society management, Frostpunk charged in face first. 
it wasn't subtle about it either. Within the first 20 minutes or so, you'll have decided whether you're going to enact child labor laws, whether you should cut the limbs of workers who get frostbite, and how to best make use of dead citizens. In Frostpunk, the city building element seemed to serve as the foundations for a bigger purpose. It's not what you build that determines whether you survive, but the choices that you make. Okay, and the stuff you build as well. But the point is, the building aspect is only half the game. The rest is this constant need to keep your people willing to press on. The setting was unique and engaging. Snow-drenched landscapes inspired by the novel Ice by Yasek Dukai, as well as the 2013 Korean Czech film Snowpiercer. The radial building and heat mechanics make each city a little puzzle as well. It was bleak and morbid and incredibly stressful to play, exactly what people were clamoring for. And in the years that followed, Frostpunk became a reference point for games that wanted to follow that same mantra. The city must survive. One tenant that other games followed was the idea of a last chance. There's been some kind of apocalypse and a few survivors will try and create a new society. This approach was adopted by Surviving the Aftermath, which entered early access a year after Frostpunk launched. And whether it wanted the comparisons or not, reviewers and players put the game side by side. It was clear that this title took much from Frostpunk's approach. You'll notice the similarities immediately. The intro movie stresses the devastation felt by the world and the importance of your mission. You'll be tasked with making difficult choices, exploring the world around you and building a future for your people. However, it all felt very safe. You might argue that Frostpunk goes too far too quickly, but this didn't go far enough. The same can be said for Enzo, which took the post-apocalyptic approach, but leaned heavier into the city building side, resulting in a game that feels like Anno with a sprinkling of survival. More recently, there was New Cycle. Again, the world is gone and you must start again. And once more, Frostpunk's influence really is felt. You're tasked with making painstaking choices that affect your people. But like the others, it's missing something. It doesn't have that special factor Frostpunk has. Maybe it's the visuals? It's a wash of browns and greens and greys, which all start to look alike and fail to stand out. Other titles have looked to capture the powerful visuals of Frostpunk in their own setting. Ixion and Surviving the Abyss, for example. They both draw comparisons because they took from Frostpunk's playbook and whilst their setting might be more memorable than some, they still lack that wow factor, that part of the game that keeps you going until the early morning hours, heavy with the awful decisions you've made and the lives you've doomed. Don't get me wrong, these are all solid games. They have robust mechanics and are interesting in their own right. None of them set out to be the next Frostpunk, but they still drew comparisons from reviewers and players. And I'm not saying that every city builder survival game aimed to imitate Frostpunk, but there was definitely an offshoot that came in the wake of that game. While those titles have their merits, they're missing something crucial. Something that Frostpunk has in spades. Atmosphere. These games often try to set the scene in the same way, by building up the severity of the situation as much as possible. But that dissipates when you actually start playing. In Frostpunk, when you're trying to secure hope in building New London, the scene is set and then the atmosphere keeps building. From your very first decision, right up until the storm is pounding against your ramshackled city, there's no stopping until you perish or emerge on the other side. I think there's a reason why others fall short. They all fall back on being a city builder. When listing their inspirations, they draw from other games in the genre, be that Frostpunk or otherwise. But 11-bit studios have stated that their main influences were Snowpiercer, Ice and This War of Mine. Other studios were looking at the rest of the class, while 11-bit were looking elsewhere. Frostpunk is more concerned about refining a concept rather than adding features to expand the game. Every other title I've mentioned has more to it than Frostpunk, but they're building themselves up wide rather than reinforcing their core. 11-bit looked inwards for Frostpunk and they're doing the same for the sequel. This time, they've got the success of the original to study, to dissect, and perfect. I'm always a bit wary when a studio makes a sequel to a game I admire, but I have hope here. They made something really special the first time around, and from what we've seen so far, this second title goes even harder. The first game's tagline of The City Must Survive 
sparked a fire that impacted the genre. But the sequel is changing that. Now, the city must not fall. A subtle indicator that even though the winter has been seemingly tamed, the greatest threat still remains, and it's an internal one. The strife of humanity is as destructive as any world-ending disaster. And that's really the success of the game. It's the internal struggles that matter, be that the lives of your citizens or your own personal moral compass. You can't play it optimally as you would with any other city builder game. You just have to go with your gut and hope for the best. And then when all is said and done, you'll be faced with a summary of the choices you had to make to get there. The horrible ordeals you had to put your people through, forceful interrogations, prison sentences, oppressive guard regimes, it'll tell you that you went too far. You survived, but was it worth it? And that hits heavy. That's what sets the game apart. When you're done, you aren't thinking about how pretty your city looks or how efficient you were with your production chains. You're thinking, did I really do all those things? It's a feeling that's unique to Frostpunk. Other games have toyed with the idea, but none have plunged in so deep because you can't just make a city builder game and add that element in on the side. You have to build that first and then make the rest of the game around it. Honestly, it's one of a kind, and I can't wait to see how its sequel expands from there, how it builds on the accountability of you as a leader and pushes you to even more conflicting places. The expectations of your people have evolved, and I'm not envisioning it as Frostpunk plus more, but a new take that digs even deeper into the uncomfortable areas that made the original such a brilliant game. There's only one thing that's left to work out though. Who the hell is Stuart?